All righty, here we go. Welcome everyone to this demo of the KeyPress UI Manager. So uh, the reason I'm doing this as a live uh, kind of webinar style video here is that um, recently a, uh, a question was asked in the WP Crafter Facebook group uh, about, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, someone was frustrated with the fact that there was no single plugin that was able to do all of the uh, management and editing that they would like to do in the WordPress dashboard. And uh, if you guys had joined us earlier today, we did a webinar with Peachy and Neri about the UX and UI of the WordPress dashboard and how it's lacking in a lot of ways. And I'm sure uh, those of us who are WordPress professionals know that uh, <clears throat> the WordPress dashboard leaves a lot to be desired and um, is not very intuitive for new users to use. There's a lot of confusing things going on because let's face it, right? WordPress is an open source um, project that has been added on top of layer by layer by layer. And as it adds new cool things, it has to keep the old less cool things because of backwards compatibility and making sure that it doesn't break anything. And so because of that, you have lots of different naming conventions, lots of different interfaces, lots of different uh, um, ways to do things that can be very confusing for a new user. Um, not to mention, you know, there's WordPress branding, there's, you know, lots of other things going on. And so the, the person in the Facebook group mentioned that, hey, you know, I, I'm able to kind of cobble together a few different plugins to, to get what I want to get done, but I would love it if there were one single plugin solution and there really there really isn't one um, there are some that come pretty close but there really isn't one and so because you know I and my partner Asier have been working on uh, a plugin that that you know kind of fits the bill um, I jumped in there and, and and you know talked about my plugin a little bit and that is this plugin keypress UI manager now this is a, a new plugin, um, but it's not new for those of you who've been following us for a while, you know that we've been working on this plugin for the better part of a year, um, even over a year now. And, uh, and we were able to finally release it earlier this year in, in beta version. And then we were working out through some kinks and some bugs and some other things that we discovered through the beta release process. And now just a, a couple weeks ago, we were able to release this plugin uh, as a full 1.0 production version. Um, but that, that doesn't mean it's, it's the, the plugin is complete as far as the features and functionality that we want it to have. That just means that it's stable enough to where we're comfortable um, you know, putting it out on the public. Uh, so KeyPress UI Manager is a plugin that's meant to give you full control over the WordPress UI elements. So anything that has to do, basically the dashboard, the entire WordPress dashboard, we wanna give you full control over editing, modifying, customizing, styling, everything in the WordPress dashboard. That's our ultimate goal. Right now, what KeyPress UI Manager is, is it's, we think it's the best solution to edit and modify the, the menus. So we're talking about the admin menu, the toolbar menu at the top, and the customizer menu. These are the main interface menus that your customers or clients will interact with as they are navigating through the WordPress interface. And so we wanted to tackle those things first because frankly, that's the most difficult, um, that's the most difficult um, uh, problem to solve technically. Uh, and that's because those are dynamic areas of WordPress. The, the admin menu, the toolbar, and the customizer all change depending on the theme you have installed, depending on what plugins you're running, um, depending on lots of different things. Those things are dynamic and they require different uh, setup depending on who's logged in, um, so forth and so on. Additionally, we um, come from the place of WordPress multi-site. So we wanna make sure that this plugin is um, WordPress multi-site compatible and is able to uh, handle the complexities of having lots of different subsites, lots of different users, lots of different themes, lots of different plugins, and giving you the flexibility to edit the menus and eventually the dashboard for any kind of situation, any type of login, any type of client, any type of plugin or theme that you're using. Uh, we want to be able to handle that with uh, dynamic editing capabilities. So that's where 
KeyPress UI Manager starts from. Uh, and so during this uh, demo, feel free to chime in with questions. Uh, this is live in Facebook as well as uh, we're doing a Zoom webinar. So uh, you can throw questions in the Zoom webinar. Let me go ahead and get that open. So I have those windows over here. Okay, so I've got the chat. So um, if you're live in the Zoom webinar, feel free to throw a question or a chat. If you're watching this on Facebook, feel free to um, ask a question in the Facebook video as well. And I'll try to um, answer those as I go. Um, just really quick, here's the, uh, the landing page and the demo page for KeyPress UI Manager. The main reason, again, why I wanted to do this webinar was to show you what KeyPress UI Manager can do now, because <laughs> This is so new that the video on the on our landing page and a lot of the description is a little outdated. So I need to go in here and update some of this stuff because it can do a lot more than than we're we're listing here right now. Um, so instead of you know spending the time to try to update all of this and then and then share it, I just wanted to get this demo done so you guys can see uh, what it looks like in practice. Right now it's ninety nine dollars per year. Um, and then we do have a renewal discount of 20%. So every time it renews every year, you get 20% off, uh, whatever price it happens to be at that time. And then you can see our key features are reordering, reorder, rename, hide, and create new user interface items in the WordPress admin area, specifically admin menu, customizer, and toolbar menus. Um, and then you can uh, display those edits depending on user roles, username, active theme, and in, in multi-site, sub-site, or if you're using the WP Ultimo plugin, then uh, WP Ultimo plan. You can create custom CSS classes or just write your own custom CSS for the dashboard, and we'll get into that. And we have what we think is the easiest to use interface for editing WordPress menus. So um, instead of describing it, let me show you. That's kind of why we're here. So. Right here, I have, I'm gonna uh, use multi-site, WordPress multi-site to, to demonstrate kind of the, the power of how this can be used in a multi-site environment. However, almost everything I'm gonna show you, except for the unique multi-site pieces, um, can be done on WordPress single, uh, a single WordPress installation just as easily. Everything works the same. Uh, just if you have it installed on multi-site, it'll add a couple extra features in there. So we're gonna approach this from multi-site, but again, it, you'll be able to see that it, it can work on single site as well. So here I am in the network admin dashboard for my multi-site installation. And when you install the UI manager, you'll get, uh, if you're in multi-site, you have to go to your network admin dashboard to see the UI manager menu item. If you're on a single WordPress install, then this will just show up in your admin menu. Go ahead and click on that. And when you do, actually all of these will be unchecked. So let me go ahead and uncheck those. So right now we have four uh, modules that come with the plugin and we have plans to add more. And at the end of this, uh, this demo, I'm gonna talk about kind of our future roadmap for the plugin and our future plans. But right now we have these four modules, the admin menu, the toolbar, the customizer, and then branding. That's our newest module that, uh, that we're starting to add things to now. So let's start with the admin menu. This is kind of the, the meat and potatoes of the WordPress dashboard, right? This admin menu is where a lot of confusion can come in with your WordPress users and clients and customers. So let's go ahead and activate that module. We allow you to activate or deactivate different modules because you might be using another plugin that has an admin menu editor aspect. And you might only be using our plugin for the, for the customizer editor or for the branding or something else. So you can, in order to reduce plugin conflicts, you can activate or deactivate any of our modules if you have another plugin that's doing something similar so that they don't conflict with each other. So that's why we have these modules listed here and you have to activate them. So let's go ahead and activate the admin menu module. Then you'll see in our uh, plugin sub menu here is the admin menu. So let's click on that. And then really quick, let me introduce you to kind of the interface that we use for all of our modules in this plugin. Um, and we're trying, uh, one of our philosophies at KeyPress is to use the default WordPress um, aesthetic or design or, or you know, whatever you want to call it, styling. 
So that way, when you're in our plugins, it feels like it's part of WordPress. It doesn't feel like it's its own app inside of WordPress, which can be confusing, right? Because you're used to using WordPress, you're used to how WordPress works. So why reinvent the wheel? So everything here you'll notice is very familiar. It's a familiar interface to what you're used to. We used the existing WordPress uh, navigation menu editor screen uh, to inform uh, how, this, how this looks and works. Um, so really quick, at the top of our module here, you'll notice some tabs. These tabs will take you to separate areas where you can create different menus. Um, so we've, we've separated out subsites, and this is only in uh, multi-site, by the way. You won't see this in single install. But we've separated out subsites, so you can edit that admin menu. The main site, which is the, you know, the primary site of your network, you can edit that menu separately. And then your network admin menu. And our plugin is one of the few dashboard editing plugins that actually lets you edit the multi-site network admin menu, which is here. And that's useful if you, you bring in on contractors or developers or business partners who you want to give access to your network admin, but you don't maybe want them to see different, different things. So you can install the network admin uh, or you can use the network admin uh, tab to edit your network admin menu. But for us, we're going to edit the subsite admin menu. And I already have a subsite loaded up here in incognito window. I'm logged in as a regular user um, on the, on the subsite. So that way we can see what the changes are going to look like to the user on this particular subsite. So I'll keep that handy. All right. So now um, below the tabs is where things start getting familiar, right? This looks very much like the uh, menu navigation menu admin screen in WordPress that we're used to seeing where we have the menu on the right hand side and then on the left hand side uh, in WordPress this is where you would choose what pages you want to add to the menu in this case this is where we put the rules so for us um, and, and we're really big of course on user experience and user interface so for almost every section we have a little pop-up um, info box or, or whatever that's called that you can learn about what that particular area does. So for example, rules is a combination of criteria that must be met in order for your menu configuration to appear. Rules are cumulative, not exclusive. For example, if you select the administrator role and a specific user, the view will be visible to all administrators and to the selected user, regardless of that user's role. You must select at least one rule, otherwise no one will see this menu view. So basically what we're doing here is we're saying, whatever I check here, those people who fit within that particular criteria are gonna view whatever menu we're editing. This way you can create different menus for different users, depending on their role or for specific users if you want to, or in the case of multi-site, specific sub-sites. Um, and uh, if you have WP Ultimo installed, then this will show up. And I do have WP Ultimo installed, which by the way is an awesome plugin. If you do uh, multi-site, definitely check that out um, where you can choose the WP Ultimo plan. Um, for single sites, you'll only see uh, roles and users. Um, so for us, basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have this menu visible to everyone except myself. And since I am a super admin, because I have access to the network admin dashboard in multi-site, that's known as a super admin, I'm gonna uncheck that. And then that's gonna apply this menu to every other user uh, role. Now um, I need to create a, a menu. And uh, to do that, it's the same way you would create a navigation menu in the WordPress menu screen. You wanna first give it a name. So I'll call this um, UI manager demo. And then I'll just go ahead and save that right away. So I, I make sure that that's saved in case something crazy happens. Um, so now I have, uh, once I do save a menu, then this section appears. And once I create multiple menus, this is where I can choose which menu I'm working on at the moment. So that's how you can select those uh, different menus you've already created. Now the admin menu view here basically uh, is a specific menu configuration that is then applied to specific rules here on the left-hand side. And here is uh, the menu configuration. So basically it should be pretty intuitive. You can show, you can hide menu items by clicking the eye icon and that'll hide it. 
you can um, click on the name to rename it. You could click on the icon to choose a different icon or choose no icon at all. You could click on the gear icon to give you some uh, additional um, settings uh, or, and basically it's everything that you can do by clicking on it, or you can add a CSS class, or you can make it global, meaning that um, this will apply across all of your views. So if there's one change that you know is gonna be universal across all of everything, you just wanna hide that menu item from everybody in all situations, you can check, uh, oops. you can check it to make sure it's global. And then you get a little warning here saying the changes you make on the navigation label will be applied to all items appearances in different versions or menu views, are you sure? Um, so that's, those are the, uh, the options we have for each menu item. And then if you click the arrow, that shows you the sub menu items that would show up. So here, for example, under the WP Engine one, we have general settings, blah, blah, blah. Here they are, general settings, blah, blah, blah. And then that's how you can see those sub menu items. Now, all of these uh, can be dragged and dropped um, like so, just drag and drop. And you can also make things be sub items by dragging it to the right. Certain items you can see cannot be made as a sub item, for example, dashboard, because that will screw up with the way WordPress is, uh, has the menu items developed in core. So there are certain menu items that can't be made sub items, but most of the time what, what this is useful for is if you want to take a sub item and pull it out and make it a top level item, you can do that um, like that. So now I pulled out general settings under WP Engine and made it a top level menu. Uh, I actually don't want to do that, but uh, that was just an example. All right, so let's let's do a kind of a practical exercise because I can kind of talk about this, but uh, let's let's do do it in a practical way. So, for example, the WP Engine menu item, I don't want people to see that, so I'm going to hide that. Um, this is a separator. This line is a separator. So as you can see in this, uh, back in the day in old versions of WordPress, the separator was an actual line in the menu. Nowadays, it's just basically a spacer. So that's, that's basically what that is, the space through there between dashboard and sites. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, put that there. Now for me, one of the biggest uh, pieces of confusion in the WordPress admin menu is, um, you know, what are the different, uh, what, what, what do the different menu items do and, and when should I use them and, and how do they relate to each other? Especially things like, you know, posts and pages Posts, you know, is at the top because back in the day, WordPress was a blogging platform. Nowadays, posts isn't typically, blog posts aren't typically the first thing you're gonna want to worry about. So I don't think it should be at the top of the list. So I'll move that down, you know, towards the bottom. Actually, what I'll do instead is move pages to the top because I think building out pages are one of the first things you're probably gonna wanna do. So I'm gonna put pages at the top. I'm gonna rename posts to, blog posts that way it's a little more intuitive and that's really what you're doing here when you're editing the menu is you're making you're taking what wordpress gives you and making it more intuitive a little bit easier to understand renaming things doing stuff like that so we've got pages we've got blog posts media maybe instead i'll call it uploads media is not as you know media what does that mean is that where i go to get in the newspaper you know <laughs> the media can be confusing so we'll call it uploads um, now you'll notice i have two forms plugins i have wp forms and gravity forms i only want them to see one so i'm going to hide the wp forms and i'm going to keep gravity forms but maybe i want to change the icon cuz that icon isn't very obvious that it's forms so maybe i'll look for and, and these, and basically what we're doing is we're giving you access to the, the default WordPress dash icons. Um, so maybe I'm gonna look for like, and I can search them. So I'm gonna look for like a pencil, no, a pen, maybe edit. There we go, something like that, right? A pencil and a, and a paper, maybe, does that mean form or is there like a better form? Or maybe that, yeah, that, that, okay, so. That's my forms. So I've got pages, blog posts, uploads, forms, comments. And you'll see here is a little uh, short code 
um, if we scroll down to the very bottom, we'll see all the available short codes. So there are certain information that, that WordPress adds dynamically to different menu items. And we want to make that available to you in case you want to use that in other places or retain it if you're editing the menu or whatever. So these are certain things like site name, total updates available, plugin updates available, theme updates available, comments, display name of the user, um, the user's avatar. And this, this is helpful in the toolbar, um, the post type uh, and the, um, that is uh, for a Beaver Builder, actually. Um, that is allows you to see the the dot in Beaver Builder saying that this page uh, has a an active Beaver Builder template or not. Um, <clears throat> I I think we'll look into hiding that and only show it if you have Beaver Builder installed. Otherwise, that might be confusing. Anyways, okay. So I've kind of rearranged the menus here. Great. Um, uh, so. This little chunk of information is you're basically adding content to your website, right? And then down here, you're, you're modifying settings and stuff like that. So I want to make it a little bit easier to distinguish between the different areas of the admin menu. So I want to create headings. That's something that WordPress doesn't do by default, but that's something that we make it available to you to do. And to do that, you click the add item button up here at the top. We're going to select heading as the, uh, as the item type. And then I'm going to call this section content. I might make it all uppercase. I'm going to not use an icon. And there we go. And then I'm going to move that down here to go above this section of the menu. So here is all the areas where I can edit content. Um, I'm also going to throw in some of these menus under appearance because these are buried, but these might be uh, useful. For example, the customizer. The customizer is, to me, one of the most useful features of WordPress for newbies. It's a place where you can go to see the website and see all of the most important places where you can edit your website on the left-hand side, and you can do it in real time and see what those changes look like in real time. So I want to make that available to my users right away. So I'm gonna move that up here um, to the top. I'm gonna to rename it to something a little more descriptive like visual customizer or yeah, I guess that's good. And then I'm gonna change the icon to the paintbrush. So there we go, visual customizer is now a top level menu item. It's at the top of the list over there. Um, I don't want my user to be able to edit themes or choose themes. I want them to, to have what, that, what I give them. So I'm going to um, uh, hide that. Um, the widgets, they're going to be able to edit in the visual customizer. So I'm going to hide widgets, same with menus. Um, and I have Astra installed. So maybe I, I do want to give them access to the theme option. So I might move that here. Instead of calling it Astra, I just will call it theme options. All right, um, starter sites. I don't want them to have access to starter sites. And then I'm just going to go ahead and, and hide the entire appearance menu. Beaver Builder, I don't want them to see to have access to the Beaver Builder settings. Plugins, maybe I don't want them to have access to plugins, right? You know, you, you install the plugins that you think your clients need. You don't want them to be able to overwrite that. Um, so you can, and this is great because that, this way you don't have to use like a user role editor to hide uh, plugins from, from your users if you want to make them like a special kind of admin. You can still give your clients admin permissions, uh, make them an admin user, but you can hide the plugins from them by you know maybe selecting their, their specific user ID here or their username and then checking that to, to make this menu configuration available for that particular user, in which case you're hiding plugins from them. Users instead, I'm going to change to user settings, tools, um, I uh, will just go ahead and for now just hide tools. And then settings, maybe I'll change that to site settings. And I'll hide the Beaver Builder stuff. Um, maybe some other things I don't want them to have access to like permalinks, uh, there we go. All right, 
and then SEO. Um, sure, I give them access to, I have the, um, what do I have? SEO, uh, SEO Press. I have SEO Press installed. So maybe um, customers might not know what SEO is. So I'll spell it out, search engine optimization. And instead of using their branded icon, I'll use my own icon for that. Um, gosh, I don't know, is there, there we go. I'll use, there we go, search engine optimization. And then I'm gonna create another heading and actually I'm gonna move, yep, there we go. I'm gonna create another heading for settings. Okay, oops, two S's, one S. All right. Oh, sorry, I wanted to make that a heading. There we go. All right, um, I want no icon for the heading and I'm gonna move that down here. So under settings will be user settings, site settings and search engine optimization. All right, there we go. That looks pretty good. Another thing you can do with the plugin is add a link to like a third, like your, your website or something like that. So maybe I want to add a menu item. This is a custom link. This is going to be linked to my support portal URL.com. <laughs> maybe that is an actual website. Um, and then I'm going to say this can go to the name will be get support so that they have an easy way to um, contact you for support. And then maybe I'll make this like, um, is there like a question? No, um, help, there we go, get support, cool. And then I'll move that down to the bottom and I'll put a separator to separate it. Cool, okay, so I think we've got a good admin menu set up here, so I'm gonna save it. All right, and then I'm going to pull up my subsite here and I'm logged in already as a non-super admin. So all I should need to do is refresh. And there we go. There's my menu, a lot simpler, a lot um, easier to, you know, we've got the icons, we've got the renamed, you know, blog posts, uploads, um, and then we've got the headings, so everything. Now you can also see the, the headings are a little subdued. Maybe I wanna make those bold. You can do that. You can add uh, HTML into the headings. So I just wanna make my headings bold. All right, save it. And refresh. Uh, oh, that didn't take. Um, maybe I need to add that here. Hmm. That doesn't seem to be working anymore. That used to work. <laughs> so we will uh, try to, yeah, that didn't save. Okay. Um, in the past, you were able to make the the um, the content bold. Um, so so that's it, right? So we're able to do that. Now, another thing we can do is um, you, we can color the different menu items. So for example, maybe the get support menu item, I wanna have that stand out so people would see it. So um, we you can use custom uh, color classes that we have built into the plugin. Um, so for example, if I wanna change the background color, I can use KPUI-BG- and then the color name. So let me copy and paste that here and add that as a CSS class. Um, color name would be, I don't know, maybe yellow. Okay, save. And refresh. 
<laughs> yeah, that's a little stark, <laughs> right? But you, you can't miss it. Um, so I would also want to change the text color as well. Um, and that is KPUI color dash color name. So I can go in here and ask here, I believe we can separate it with a comma. So if I did KPUI dash color dash, you know, maybe black. That should work. Yep, there we go. So now it's black. And in our uh, in an upcoming update, we're going to make it so the icon changes color when you change the text color as well. So you can see the icon too. But you get the idea, right? Maybe I won't wouldn't use something as stark as yellow, but that's how you can kind of uh, edit the the color of your menu items um, with our built-in color classes. Now, Azir is telling me that the HTML should be uh, I should be using strong, <laughs> which is proper HTML formatting, anyways. Um, so that was my bad. Um, so let's see if I use strong and save. Let me see if that worked. Yep, there it is. Now it's bold. It's you, you can tell it's it's bolder than than before. So yep. So you can use some basic HTML. Use proper HTML, um, not be because uh, that's kind of outdated. Uh, use strong instead. Um, Cool. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Andrew and Asier, uh, for that. Okay. So that's um, basically um, what you can do with the menu. Of course, you can get more granular and more complicated. Uh, you know, by assigning user roles. Now we've got advanced options. Advanced options are good, especially in multi-site when you have multiple themes installed per subsite, and then you, your users have the option to change back and forth between themes. You wanna make sure that when they change from theme A to theme B, that theme B doesn't add a bunch of new menu items that you weren't expecting and screws up your, your custom menu. So with advanced options, you can filter this menu that you're editing by, by a certain theme. So then it will just reload it, and then the new theme will add any additional items that are, that, you know, that theme might be adding and then you can edit those as well and all of those changes are all saved within your one view so that way you know whatever theme is being installed whatever role someone uh, uh, logs in as uh, or whatever subsite they're on that you know you have it covered so that it will look how you want it to um, and i believe i covered everything uh, we have a couple checkboxes here to um, you know if you want to show or hide the collapse menu link, you can do that. Maybe you just want them to see icons by default. Who knows? You want to give them a, a full a full width screen here. Um, so so that's basically what you can do there in the admin menu editor. And then if you want to, you know, take this menu and edit it even further for certain users, you can always duplicate the view to take all the things you've done, create a new view and then just make whatever modifications you want to that view um, by doing that. In the future of the plugin, we're gonna uh, have the ability for you to import and export views so that you can you know, save a view in one site, export it, and then import it into another site. We're also going to give you the ability to um, save rule sets. So for example, if you have a very complicated rule set for a particular menu item and you also wanna apply that rule set to your toolbar menu and to your customizer menu, you can save a rule set and then apply it quickly to other, other modules. So that's the admin menu module. Uh, if you guys have any questions about that, go ahead and shoot that over. Otherwise, I'm gonna move on to, I'm not gonna spend too much time on the toolbar because it basically works the same way as the admin menu, but I'll just show you really quick what that looks like. If I check to activate the toolbar menu. I go, oops, not tools, toolbar. There we go. All right, so this is where you can edit the toolbar menu. Um, the toolbar menu was particularly tricky <laughs> for us to be able to dynamically show you here so you can edit it and then be able to save those changes and, and display them on the front end and the back end, right? Because the toolbar looks different depending on where you're viewing it, right? If I were to, um, switch over to the front end, the toolbar menu here is much different than it is on the back end. 
So we needed to take that into account. So you can choose which area you're editing and, um, and that is saved within the same view. So if I would to save view number one, I could edit the front end and the back end and save it and that would all live under view one. Um, you'll notice uh, on the back end, the first menu item is this little hamburger menu that you don't see here. And that um, shows up only in mobile view. Um, that's another kind of challenge, right? Is the WordPress menus look different when you're viewing in mobile view. Um, let me see if I can just show that to you real quick. There it is, there's the hamburger menu and then you're only seeing icons. You're not seeing full menu item names. So we wanna take that into account as well and make sure you're able to edit those things as well. So lots of um, things we're, we're taking to an account as we uh, created this module. And then, uh, but everything else basically works the same, right? You can see the su sub menu items, you can change icons, you can rename. Um, we have the dynamic uh, info that's being displayed here. Um, uh, you can drag and drop everything on the left-hand side. Right now, you can't do that on the right-hand side because it's kind of stuck over here in its own little world. Um, but you can still edit those men the menus on the right-hand side. And if you wanted to just hide that and then display that information over here, uh, you can do that um, because we give you the power to display you know, the user's name, their avatar, and you can also create um, uh, a menu item um, with the logout link. So instead of having the logout be over here, you can have the logout be over here or even on the left-hand side if you wanted to. Um, so that's basically it. I'm not gonna go into too much details because again, this works exactly the same way as the admin menu area works. So, um, so there you go. That's that. Um, and again, you can change the toolbar. You can create views for subsites, main site, and network admin all separately. Um, the one thing I really want to show you guys is the customizer. So let me jump in back into settings. I'm not going to save that. Let me activate the customizer module. All right. So now, um, just to, you know, kind of walk through the customizer really quick, as we all kind of know and, and love or know and hate, the customizer is um, you've got, um, oh, oops, I already have a view saved. Let me, or, hmm. Let's, Let me see, let me save view one. Cause I think the previous view I had created was cached. Hmm. Oh, I know, oh, I see, okay. Yep, uh, and this, this is why this is important because for every theme, right? Every theme has its own version of the customizer and, and the customizer is very driven by the particular theme you have installed. Um, you know, it changes very drastically. So we broke out each theme that you have installed in your either network or on your single site uh, has its own tab. So you can create uh, individual views for each theme. And for me, I have basically all of these themes are Astra, um, you know, si uh, what are they called? Their, um, their, site, um, their site templates. And then I just rename them to, to something uh, for my niche, which is computer repair. But anyway, so um, I am in the computer repair view here, and now I need to uh, delete what I had and just restore the default view. Okay, then I'm going to name this um, UI manager demo. And now here we go. My site, my demo site has the default, um, the default customizer. So, you know, it, it's, Astra does a pretty good job of, of making things intuitive. You've got global header at the top, footer at the bottom, and it kind of follows a, a logical progression. Then you've got menus, widgets, and homepage settings down here, which kind of feels out of place. 
So this is a good opportunity to rearrange some things, rename some things, and make it a little bit easier for our users. So um, you can see uh, that the way the customizer works is you have the active theme, which is this section right here at the top, the active theme. If you, you might not want to show the user what theme they have active because maybe you only want them to use the theme that you installed for them. So you can maybe hide that if you want to. And then um, WP Ultimo registration, I'm gonna hide that. Don't need to see that. Um, global, what does global mean exactly? Um, maybe I'll say global settings just to make it a little more clear. And here's something I really like about our customizer editor is you can also add icons. So to make it a little more visually intuitive. So here I'm gonna add the globe icon for global settings. And then for header, maybe, um, I don't know. I don't know how, I would have to think about how to make that a little bit more intuitive, but header, header is fine, maybe header section. I don't know, something like that. I'm just doing that to, to show how to do that. And then um, I would find an icon that I think best represents a header. Uh, that might be tricky. Um, eventually we are going to also roll in the ability to upload your own icons. Um, so that will be helpful for sometimes when you can't find a good um, default uh, WordPress icon to use, but maybe something like this where you like see, like it looks like there's the header at the top, something like that. Okay, breadcrumbs, do my users really care about breadcrumbs? Maybe that's something that I set up and I don't want them to edit, so I'm gonna hide breadcrumbs. Um, for the blog, um, uh, I don't know, I think that's fine. And then I can find a good icon for that. Maybe again, like the pencil icon there. Sidebar. Um, let's see, we have sidebar and that's where you can, I'm just looking over here. That's where you can choose on what side you wanna display the sidebar and stuff. Maybe I don't want my customers to mess with that. So I'm gonna hide that. And then what I also like to do is move all the things I've hidden. I just move to the bottom, get them out of the way. Oh, except the active theme that has to stay at the top. Uh, okay, all right, so we got global settings, header section, blog, footer, um, that's fine. And I'm going to, is there something that looks like a footer? <laughs> no, it needs to be like a tennis shoe icon or something. Um, so I don't know, I'll just choose that for now. There's the section separator, which is nice, right? That you can um, add uh, wherever you want. And then we've got menus. I'm gonna move menus up to below header because that's where menus are typically, typically reside. Um, so let's, and sometimes it's tricky <laughs> to get this. There we go. There we go, okay. Um, and maybe I'll call this navigation menus. Navigation menu maybe they only have one menu and then I'll do the hamburger icon. Okay, um, for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to quickly hide the rest of these things. Um, so there you go. So now you have your customized customizer. I'm gonna save that view. I'm gonna come over here and refresh. I might need to exit out and then restart. <sighs> hmm. All right, it's not loading. That is not good. Let's see, um, computer repair, save the configuration, refresh. All right, so something, is it because that's hidden? Let's see. All right, Esther, help me out. Why would this not be showing anything? Could it be a caching issue? Let me purge WP Engine cache. Nope. All right, so there is um, something going on here. I'm not sure why. It's not 
much go away. Hmm. Okay. Um, it should it should be showing. So I think that's good that we see that now, so we can look into why that's happening. It must have to do with maybe something is hidden that shouldn't have been hidden. Gotta love live demos, right? There we go. Okay, so it must not have liked that I hid something and I'm not sure what that thing is that I hid that it didn't like. Um, kind of go one by one, but I don't want to waste your guys' time. Oh, uh, it's one of those. Maybe it's homepage settings. Um, no, it looks like if I, it doesn't like me hiding the widgets either. Oh, well, okay. Um, so we're, we'll, we'll look into that. We'll get that fixed. That's probably just some weird bug that's happening. Um, but here you can see we've added the icons. We've renamed the things. We've re we reordered them. Um, so, um, so that's, you know, and then you can also do the same thing with the, with these sub menus. So you could reorder them, rename them, give them um, icons. And again, you can do that like you do normally um, through there. So you can really get into kind of in depth of uh, editing your customizer menu. You can also change colors. So if you wanted to kind of color coordinate your customizer to make it look more like the WordPress, uh, how you have the dashboard looking, you can do that again with our um, custom classes, KP, UI, KP, UI, dash, BG, dash, blue, maybe I think light blue might be one. Let's see. There you go, light blue. So you can, you know, maybe have your your um, your company's colors are. You just want to re add those. You'll also notice when um, there's certain caveats uh, or there's extra information. Um, that shows up here, for example, navigation menu. Um, when you click on that, um, you are given uh, some of this extra information at the top and, and we're showing that here um, so that you can see what that looks like and you have full visibility into that in your uh, menu here. Okay, so let's see, I'll save that, I, I think I, change the colors for a lot of those menu items. Yep, so there you go. You can color coordinate and kind of make it look more like your, your, um, your brand. So um, soon we're gonna add more um, areas where you can color coordinate and style the entire menu area here. Um, you'll be able to edit this top part here as well. Maybe add your logo. Um, these are all, uh, we're going to make it so that you can completely edit, including adding new items. So you can add new items to the customizer um, and, uh, and, and do all of that stuff. So you'll, you'll, be, you'll have further control over the customizer menu. Um, and then the final uh, module I wanna show you here is, and this is a very new module, it's called branding. So we don't have a lot here yet, but we're gonna be adding a lot here soon. Right now, the only thing you can do in the branding module is add custom CSS and custom JavaScript to your dashboard. So for example, I actually happen to have um, a bunch of CSS code that we set up earlier for the dashboard. So you would basically just set up um, the, the things in, the, oh, actually, that's not the complete, shoot, I didn't copy and paste the complete um, the complete CSS. 
uh, where did that go? It's... Simply style the admin menu with CSS. Um, just give me two seconds and I'll be able to pull that up here. Okay. Uh, here we go. All right. Almost there, here we go. Okay, almost got it for you. If you have any questions, go ahead and throw those in the chat now. So while I'm doing this, I can answer anything you have. Okay, there we go. So there is my custom CSS. Um, uh, oops, <laughs> I didn't forget to uncheck super admin. So this is saving it for everybody. You can see, um, but okay, there we go. So I'm saving it. So now if I go to my sub menu, or so I'm sorry, sub site, here's, here's my CSS. So what I did is, you know, I, I styled some, the toolbar, I changed the font, changed some colors of buttons and links, you know, pretty, pretty basic, but it can, it can match my, um, oops, that's the wrong place. It can match my, um, my, uh, my branding, right? The colors of my brand or, um, let's see, you know, and then you can get as, as crazy as you want with that. And the cool thing about this is you don't need to, you know, enqueue a style sheet or anything like this. Any styles you, you set here automatically apply to the WordPress dashboard. Um, and then you can also apply styles to the front end um, under areas. So if I want this to apply to the back end, and then I want different styles to apply to the front end, and the front end means that when I um, go to visit the front end of my website, the style here can be different. Maybe I don't want it to be all big and green like this. Maybe I want it to be a little more subtle. Then I can set a different view for the front end styles. The front end also applies to the customizer. So if I wanted to apply uh, custom styles to the customizer, I can also do that um, by uh, choosing front end and then adding those styles there. So that gives you some pretty granular control over creating um, custom styles for your, your dashboard. And then what we're going to do in, in a very soon future version is give you, um, you know, controls to change the styling, like, you know, um, buttons to click to change the color of fonts and, but and buttons and sliders to change, you know, the things you're used to seeing when you're editing and styling a theme, we're gonna make those available to you to edit and style the dashboard. So you have complete control over styling and changing the look of your dashboard and making it as easy as it is to change the look and style a theme on the front end. So that's our ultimate goal with the branding section. And then of course, give you the rules to apply the themes you create to different areas and different people and different roles, depending on what you want. You've got the JavaScript editor. So if you wanna add some dynamic animations or um, some you know more complex, uh, behavior in the back end, you can do that here with the JavaScript editor. And, and that's what you get now uh, with the UI manager. Let's see, I see we have some questions. So let me, let me answer these really quick. They've been here for a while. Um, let's see, one question was, is there any way to put my own icons? Not yet, that's coming. Um, so you cannot uh, add your own icons yet. We're just using the WordPress dash icons because those are what's available within WordPress core. But um, we will add in the future, maybe we'll add, you know, the ability to use font awesome icons, or even if you want to upload your own icon, um, we might be able to give you that, that opportunity. 
that's definitely something on our radar and that's something that's in the roadmap. Um, another question uh, for the customizer, do I have to make changes for every, every template? Um, I believe, uh, are you talking about the theme? Yes, you, you uh, want to make changes to each theme. And that's because like I said, um, the customizer is really dependent on the theme. So you wouldn't want to make a global customizer changes because each theme that you install, the customizer is gonna to be totally rearranged, totally different. So you wanna make sure that for every theme you have installed, you make a separate view because you need to edit each view separately for each theme. Um, and then um, another question is, how do I get rid of certain dashboard boxes? And that is again, something that's coming very soon. So these little dashboard boxes here, that's probably gonna be the next new module that we include in the plugin is dashboard editing. So you'll be able to show and hide different dashboard boxes. You'll be able to create your own dashboard box. Uh, and that's something that's coming very soon because that is a, a big need of our customers that wanna be able to edit and rearrange these dashboard boxes. And again, you're gonna be able to do that using our rule system. So you'll be able to edit the, the dashboard boxes depending on user, role, subsite, WP Ultimo plan, all of that stuff. So all of that stuff, uh, the, the rules where you can choose what you wanna be, apply these different changes to will be available pretty much for every view, that we, for every module that we create for the plugin. So really quickly, now that we're talking about kind of our future plans, I wanna show you our, our roadmap. So if, um, if you go to our website and go to support and click on feedback, you can see kind of some of the things we're planning. So um, we've got our, our, our feedback board where we show kind of the things we're working on and the things we have completed. Um, on the right-hand side are the things we've done in the middle are the things we're work, working on. So branding is a big one. We want to make it so that you can add your logo um, in the dashboard everywhere. So you can replace the WordPress logo with your own logo to add to different places in the dashboard. That's, that's we're working on that now. Um, the import export feature for the different views, we're working on that now. And to be able to block access to, so, so for right now, when you, hide a menu item, you're basically just hiding it from view. If the, if the user knows the, the URL to access the, for example, the plugins screen directly, they could, in theory, type, type that in the, in the URL box and still have access to that page. Um, the chances of that happening are very slim. Most of our users are not that savvy. But if you're worried about that, then, uh, and, and some of our users are, we're going to be adding the ability to block, to entirely block access to that page, not just hide it, but actually block access to that. So that's coming. And then you can see some of the things we have planned in the near future, the ability to create new admin pages and actually create your own settings page, an admin page using you know, a form builder or you know, just using a WYSIWYG editor. That's coming very soon to be able to modify the existing WordPress admin pages. So something we wanna be able to do is, for example, um, let me go to a regular site here. For example, in the settings, actually users, this is a perfect example. In, in the user profile screen, this is something that your users have access to, but what if, for example, you don't want them to have access to half of the stuff here? Maybe you just want them to come here to be able to change, to update their email, to update their password, and to maybe change their, um, their name. And you wanna hide everything else on here. With our plugin, you'll be able to do that, to hide the visual editor, to hide all this stuff and only show the areas here that you wanna show. That's what we mean um, by modify admin pages. Um, we're also working on one for Gutenberg. So you'll be able to hide, rearrange, rename different areas of the Gutenberg um, editor. Uh, this is what we just talked about, the dashboard widget manager that's coming soon as well. Um, we might actually want to move that to in progress because we are working on that currently. Um, be able to add your own links to customizer, that's coming soon. Be able to save your own rule sets, that's coming soon. Uh, mobile toolbar view, um, to be able to edit the toolbar as it looks in the mobile view. 
Um, that was requested by someone. So we'll, we'll work on that eventually. And, oh, here's one that's kind of cool. So say, for example, you update a plugin and the plugin, the new version of the plugin adds a new menu item. And, you know, that's going to screw up your custom menu, right? So you want to know if you install an, a plug or you update a plugin, you want to know if it's adding a new menu item that's going to screw up a saved menu. We're going to work on the ability to notify you. So if you do update a plugin, you'll see a little notification saying, this plugin may modify the admin menu. Do you want to you know, go to the UI manager plugin to, to fix that? And that way you have visibility. You're not caught by surprise when you update a plugin and it screws up your custom menu. Um, so that's the new item notification there. Um, let's see. Let me look. I oh, haven't been looking at Facebook. Let's see if we have any questions here. Um, Andrew asked, can you move sub panels to, uh, to, the, to another main panel uh, in the customizer? And as here replied that, yes, we're working on that. Any updates on meta boxes on pages posts? Um, that's something we're working on too. That's gonna fall under the modify admin pages. Um, we're working on that for Gutenberg, um, but then we'll also have something for the classic editor as well. Um, Cool. So, so that's some of the near term um, things we're looking at, but we want to hear your guys' feedback, right? We're going to use your feedback to really, um, you know, all of this stuff here came from, from user feedback. We want to make this the only plugin you need to modify the WordPress dashboard. So we, we've got it, you know, part of the way there by being able to edit the admin menus, the toolbar menu, the customizer menu, we're going to get you most of the way there by allowing you to brand and style and add your logo to the dashboard here. Um, and then we'll kind of take it home by giving you the ability to edit each of these individual screens and hide, show, rearrange all the different things that you see in all of the, the WordPress screens. Um, but let us know what you want. And we will work on adding that into the plugin. So this has already been over an hour. <laughs> There's a lot to go over. Hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully this shows you that, um, you know, we hopefully you see we've got a pretty powerful plugin here. Um, other than that one little hiccup that we're going to get fixed in the next version, I promise. Um, whatever it was that was keeping the customizer from loading, we'll get that fixed. I've never seen that before. So there, there's something weird going on there. Um, and, and hopefully you can see that we're, we're dedicated and focused on making this the, uh, the single plugin that you need to make any change to the WordPress dashboard, which we think is super important uh, because your users can get confused using the WordPress dashboard. We also want it to maybe give you the option to make it so it doesn't even look like WordPress. It looks like a totally different SaaS that you created. And that's the power of our plugin. Actually, really quick, I want to, um, want to give you a sneak preview of, of something we've done. Uh, and this was not planned. And I hope this is okay with Astier, but I'm going to do it anyways. I'm going to show you a sneak preview of what we've um, been able to accomplish with our plugin. Um, and this was done uh, for a project of ours that we're working on. Um, let me get this loaded up here really quick. In town dashboard. All right, so here is a custom dashboard that we created for a, a project that we're working on um, where uh, we've basically totally changed the WordPress dashboard so it doesn't really look like the WordPress dashboard. Um, and uh, we've, what we've done is we've created uh, basically a, a, a wizard that requests information from the user and we're using gravity forms for this. And then they go through each of these forms and they fill out information, save and, and each time they click save and continue, it takes them to the next form and they step through. And it's basically works like a SAS where it's just asking you questions, you're answering the questions. And then what, what it's doing is it's taking all this information and populating it on the front end. So it's using short codes to gather the information and populate it on the front end. 
so that when you view the site on the front end, um, it's going to take all of that information and display it in different places on the front end. For example, you know, if they chose different recycling paper types, um, it'll, it'll show that there. The schedule um, will show up using, um, we're basically using conditionals, uh, template tags and short codes and Beaver Builder to take all of the information they fill out on the gravity form and then populate the front end of the website. Right now with Keypress UI Manager, you can get maybe 75% of the way to what you see here. Um, Cause you can, you know, restyle the dashboard. You can rearrange the menu. You can um, pretty soon you'll be able to create custom menu items that you can add and then put in forms. And then we're working on a plugin where you can take, where you can hook into gravity forms and display a gravity form on the back end, and then take the information from the gravity form and display it on the front end using short codes. And we already have it built for ourselves for this project. We just need to package it as a plugin to give to you guys. So I'm really excited about that. I wanted to share that with you guys who have been sticking around for longer than an hour on this webinar, um, that this is kind of what something that you'll, an example of something you'll be able to create using our plugins uh, and, and, uh, and, it's, it's really cool that you can just totally restyle the, the WordPress dashboard and uh, make it look however you want. And that's the power of Keypress UI Manager. So if you wanna check that out, head on over to getkeypress.com. Um, click on plugins, click on Keypress UI Manager. And I think we have a vanity domain as well. I think if you go to, uh, what is it, uimanager.io, that takes you there. Um, so that might be easier to remember, uimanager.io. And um, actually I'll make that, there we go. Um, and then you could purchase it now for $99 a year. This price is gonna go up very soon. Once we add the, um, the Gutenberg, module and the and we flesh out the branding module a little bit more and then we add in some of the uh, the dashboard the wordpress dashboard module um the price is going to go up for sure um you know so lock it in at this price because when you get it at this price then in the future you'll get the 20 percent off um to renew it and uh and then you'll get a good price so definitely check that out if you have any questions um let us know in the comments in Facebook, or you can uh, just fill out the contact form here on, um, there we go, here on getkeypress.com, and we'd be happy to answer those questions. And let us know what you wanna see in the plugin. We wanna give you what you want. So let us know, we'll build it into the plugin. All right, thanks guys, thanks for hanging out, thanks for watching. Um, I appreciate it and uh, hope you guys check out the plugin. All right, next time. Uh, <laughs> I need to find where my Zoom window went. Oh, there it is. Okay. All right, guys, thanks. See ya.